It's worth mentioning, the reason why I'm sort of drawing attention to this, I was originally going to do this in period two. This is the question I was alluding to that I was going to do in period two. But enough people have asked me this question, this lesson, that I want to show you now, okay? Um, this is a whole category of questions, okay? Very originally, <laughs> math teachers have come to call these questions differentiate, hence evaluate, or hence integrate, okay? If, for example, I just made it an indefinite integral, or you obviously can't evaluate that, you just integrate, okay? So in other words, just like we've been doing the whole course, you're going to make a statement about integration on the basis of something you know about a derivative, okay? So let's just start, let it hold our hand through it, and let's see what we can notice, okay? So part A, this is the easy bit, right? What kind of um, knowledge do we need to product. differentiate this? Any product rule, because it's x times e to the x, okay? So I'm just going to go straight into that x e to the x, I'm going to get uh, v u dash plus u v dash. Are you happy with that? Is that okay? Just straight out. It's a little bit of simplifying to do. I mean, hardly, really. But this is what I've got. Okay? Now, by the way, just as a, a minor point, but it actually becomes quite significant in this question. A lot of people I want to make note of um, are being a little bit lazy with their notation and they're writing things like, oh, you know, x e to the x equals e to the x plus x e to the x. Now, obviously what I've just written is disastrous because quite clearly this is not equal to that, okay? But the fact that you should write this out the front actually becomes instrumentally important for this question. Watch. What is part B? What is part B? They want us to integrate the same function. It's kind of weird. Like, I wonder if some of you looked at this and thought, did they mean integrate? Did they mean to integrate? And the answer is no, they didn't. They wanted you to differentiate to see this, right? Now, when you differentiate x e to the x, because of the way product rule works and because of the way exponential functions work, x e to the x, the original function, it pops up again it reappears in the derivative. I mean, e to the x will always do that in some way, shape, or form, okay? In this case, it's reappeared here plus another thing, okay? Now, this is the thing I want to integrate, that part there, specifically that part there. The reason why I highlight that is because I want to integrate this, but I don't know how. But I know how to integrate this, and I know how to integrate this. What happens if I integrate that? It just goes back to where it started, right? If you integrate a derivative, you get back the original function with a constant hanging on, okay? So watch, I'm going to take this line, just as I wrote it at the end of part A, and I'm going to integrate every single term with respect to x. You might think that doesn't get you very far, but it does, watch. On the left-hand side, you get this guy, right? Like you just go back to where you came from because I'm reversing the process. Here, I'm actually going to write it out. This is e to the x dx. And over here, you've got x e to the x dx. That's the thing you want. Like, there he is. This is a little bit like implicit last time, right? Where it's like, oh, the, the thing you want, it just sort of appears uh, almost by magic, right? It's not by magic. It's from part A. Okay. I should already say this is part A. Okay. Now, c is a constant here that I introduced over there on the left-hand side. When I do this part in here, e to the x, that just becomes e to the x, plus its own constant, okay? Now, because at this point, I'm like, oh, I've got constants flying around. Uh, I didn't expect that I was going to have more than one. I'm just going to go back and say, well, I'll just call this one the first one, and this one is just another one, okay? They're just more constants that I'm going to mix together in a second. So I've got another constant. Now I know nothing about what these constants are equal to, but I do know if I put them together, it'll just be another constant, right? Constant plus constant or constant take away constant, still constant. So this is the piece I'm after. So I better get him by himself. So I'm gonna write him over here on the left hand side. That's what I'm after. And then I'll group everything else together. I have this, x e to the x. I've got this, take away e to the x. And then I've got these guys, I'm going to just mash them together and call them a third constant. I don't care what it's equal to, because in a second, it will disappear. Right? I'll just, I might as well say. There you go. Okay? Now, I'm one step away from actually getting what I want. Right? This is an indefinite integral. I actually have boundaries, don't I? So from here, my next line is, well, 
whack some boundaries in there. This turns it into a definite integral. I've already worked out what the primitive is. It's x e to the x minus x to the c. Forget about the constant because it's going to get added and subtracted. I don't think I really need to finish the question from here. I think you can do this part, right? Substitute your values in, take away your upper bound from your lower bound, and you're home. Now, pause for a moment. What did I see that you didn't see? Well, for starters, I've seen this question before, and now that you have, you'll see these all the time. And basically, you're going to get this, and the piece that you're after will appear somewhere over here. When you have a look at question 10, the same kind of thing happens, but you need to do a different algebraic thing. But algebra, you know. I will let you try and work out what different algebraic thing you need to do. It does sort of suck in the face as soon as you see it. Okay? But notice how, like, my line of working is just one line of working. Right? You went from here to here because I knew, ooh, there's the thing they want to integrate. So I'll just integrate the lot and I'll work out the rest of it afterwards. Okay? Uh, in some ways, the key is, look, this is hard to integrate. This is hard. Don't know what to do with it. But this is easy and this is easy. So if the rest of it's okay, I can deal with it, which is exactly what I did. Okay? Uh, this has no hacks. This is completely rigorous. Everything is demonstrated. Didn't have to resort to any tricks. Um, you can see that's kind of why I had to introduce so many constants all the way through because I integrate and then I combine more than once, right? But there you go, and you can evaluate it to get an answer out of it. You will have to pull a slightly different algebraic trick. It won't just be sitting there, like right in the face of it. So just really quickly, I'll show you 10, which is not the question you answered, so that you can think about it differently. I believe you have to differentiate. Mark, what was it in question 10? What's part A? E to the x, what, plus, or is it minus? Uh, plus. Plus. They ask you to do this, and then hence, integrate, if I remember this right, this. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Now, once you differentiate this, what you get, this is equal to this. Where does this appear in the integral you want? It's the numerator. This is f dash on f. So it's just a log. That's what you end up with, right? So that's a different algebraic trick, but in principle, it's the same thing.